Good evening. This is maybe the 20th take. I, I had so many problems with this video. First with the microphone. I don't think that's entirely solved. Uh, the sound is probably not great in that on that video. So uh, this video. So let me know. But I, I, I don't think it will be a great sound. So I apologize for that. Um, anyway, the I want to I want to make this short video because I've I've read more than once. Um, that people uh, think that R is a slow language and they, they tweet that, they write that in forums, especially when people ask, uh, should I learn R, should I learn Python? And they say, well, learn Python because R is slow, which I think is, is um, not uh, a very intelligent comment because R and Python both have the same problems in terms of speed. The problem being that both are interpreted languages. So what that means is that you can write an interpreted language is a language where you have interactive sessions, basically, where you can type something like square root of four or three or whatever, and you get your result immediately. A compiled language will not work like that. A compiled language, you will need to write your script first, compile that using a compiler, and then once you run the program, you will get the results. And these are usually orders of magnitude faster um, than uh, languages like Python or R, which have this interactivity with them. So it's a trade. Um, if you read something like R is a slow language, you might think, uh, if you're a beginner, that R is slow for um, for whatever it's supposed to do. So it's supposed to do statistics, machine learning, data science, whatever you want to call it. And you might think, well, uh, I've read online that it's slow. So if I run a linear regression in, in R, it will take much longer than in Python or than in any other language, which is not the case. And the reason is because these functions like square root or LM, they, if you if you if you read LM is a nice example because if you read the source code of LM that you see here, you see it's pure R code. However, this is just uh, all the code that you read here. That's just. Um, how should I call that? that that's just scaffolding. That's that's just uh, code to, to basically make it work. The actual function that runs the linear regression is somewhere... The, it's this one. It's lm.fit. And lm.fit, if you look at it, you again have a lot of, you, a lot of R code. But at some point, you will see this type, type of thing. And this is where these R functions are actually calling C code that has been written um, and compiled and that runs very fast. So this is C code that will actually run your linear regression. And if you have the lookup function from the lookup package, I made a video about that, so I will link it in the description, you can look up the function, the, the source code of functions uh, like, for example, square root, where you don't see anything square root you have this primitive square root but if you i think i did it for square root in the video actually if you look at the source code of square root it will be a c function i think it's it's actually the um the square root function from the c math library if i'm not mistaken but anyways it doesn't really matter what matters is that these built-in functions are written in c in c plus plus in fortran also and they run as fast as possible so of course there can be some slight differences between some languages, between some implementations. It might be the case that the square root function in uh, NumPy run, I think it's in NumPy, I don't know, I haven't written Python in so long, uh, but maybe the Python square root function runs faster than the R version, maybe, but honestly, you won't notice it. I think uh, that um, people that write that R is slow are either purposefully misleading, or they mean something else. And what they might mean, and they should be more precise, is the following. Let's suppose that for some reason I am not satisfied with the uh, power function. So the power function, you know, 2 to the square root of 4, 16. You can also write it uh, using the little hat. Uh, here it is. So let's suppose that I am not satisfied with the um, implement, R's implementation of this function. Maybe I, I want to write my own implementation. So I go online and I copy and paste this code that you can find on this website. 
which actually was in Python, so I translated it in R, and it's uh, exponent it's it's um, exponentiation by squaring actually the algorithm. So I wrote fast power, but uh, it's exponentiation by square. So great, uh, let me try fast power. So two to the power of four, 16. Great. Now uh, it works very well, but let me now check if it actually runs faster than R's version. So I have this uh, micro benchmark function from the micro benchmark package, which runs a benchmark. And you see that the built-in function runs, you know, I don't know, twice as fast, maybe three times as fast. Let's go with twice as fast as the uh, as my implementation in pure R. Okay, and if I do the box plot here, you can see that uh, it's very very. I mean, the distributions are, are quite different. So it's the R's built-in function is running much faster, and this will be the case with everything. So um, if I write my own linear regression function, so a function to run linear regression, it will be slower than LM for sure. Uh, if I write my own functions to do anything really that is already available in R, it will run slower. Same thing with, um, I don't know why I have my reference, <laughs> so I'm just Captain. Same thing with um, functions that are inside packages. So usually these functions, I mean, it depends, but usually these functions are written in C++ or in C or in Fortran. So if you need to run some kind of very complex model, it is very, very likely that it has been implemented in C or C++ under the hood. And usually, I mean, not usually, but sometimes, it also happens that you actually have someone who wrote um, the, the, the function in C. I think it's the case for um, extreme gradient boosting um, algorithm, the, the XJBoost algorithm is written in C. And the um, R's implementation is actually just a wrapper around that function, around that C code. And it's probably the same in Python. It's probably the same in, in any language. So you're basically running the same code, actually. And this is the case for a lot of libraries. Now, of course, it can very well happen that someone wrote a package, put it on CRAN, and um, this package is running pure R versions or pure R algorithms. So this will be slow. However, there is a possibility to either translate this into C++, and for this you can take a look at the advanced R book by Hadley Wicken. There is a, a let, let me move my, my face maybe. There is a, a chapter on, on you know, using RCPP to write functions um, in C++, C++ functions and run them in R. And this is usually, as far as I know, the standard way nowadays uh, to write C++ code for in, inside packages. So, if you if you're a package developer and uh, you you want to write code that runs fast, you might be interested into using uh, RCPP to write C++ code. If you don't know how to write C++ code, then I guess uh, you can hire someone to do it for you. <laughs> Uh, and Python actually has uh, something very similar. Uh, Python has Cython. So Cython is uh, a way to to write Python code that looks very much like C and that also gets compiled and you can then run your, uh, your um, Cythonized code and you can call it uh, inside a Python uh, interactive session. So just exactly the same way as you would with RCPP, I guess. Um, so, this what, what, what does that mean? That means that R is indeed slow, but only if you're doing stuff yourself, basically, and if you're doing it in pure R, which is not really the best way to do it. Of course, for small things, you write your own loop, you write your own algorithm, fair enough. But if you want to call that millions of times, um, and if you you need to to I don't know to do some very complex computations, then this is where you might want to look into uh, C++ or um, and, and call it from from R, or you might be interested into the Julia language. Julia is quite interesting in that because it doesn't have this it doesn't have this uh, dua duality of languages. So Julia is um, is uh, also an interactive or um, uh, 
uh, interpreted language like R and Python, so you can write code immediately in the console and see the results immediately. But what happens is that when you run your, when you write a function and when you run that function, that func that function gets compiled just in time. So the first run will be a bit slow because it gets compiled under the hood, and then subsequent calls of that function will actually call a compiled version and it will run quite quickly. And this is great because this means that this function, for example, this fast power function, if I write that in Julia, and if I run it in Julia, it will very likely run maybe as fast as a C version or, or slightly slower. And this is great because uh, Julia, writing Julia code is much easier for uh, someone like me who, who knows R very well but who hasn't touched C in, literally in years, in decades maybe. Um, so I can learn and write my loop in my, my algorithm in Julia very quickly. And then it runs almost, if not as fast as a C version, which is great. So I'm actually looking forward to Julia, maybe not to completely replace R, um, but for this kind of very specialized purposes, if one day I have uh, a, an algorithm like this that is very com computational intensive that I want to write, I might write it in Julia. And, and maybe call it from R. I think there is a way to call Julia from R. So uh, that might be a much easier way than uh, than using RCPP, for me at least. So there you have it, folks. So R is slow, yes, but only if you're writing pure R code. If you're using functions that are built in into R, of, or if you're using functions that are built in or that come with packages, Usually these functions are as as fast as they uh, as they come, and you won't notice any difference with uh, with Python or with any other data analysis language. So I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I will link this code into the description if even if I don't think it's that interesting. Um, I will also link this so the chapter of uh, you know high performance C with uh, with R and also the video about the lookup function that I mentioned. So have a good one.